Today I want to share something about circulation with you. Circulation is really, really important. As a matter of fact, the, the Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. The flesh is our body. So if, our, if our, the life of our body is in our blood, do you think maybe it would be a good idea if we, could, if we understood the blood system? Well, I think it, it would be. As a matter of fact, when my, my ancestors landed in Massachusetts back in when the Mayflower landed, they, they spoke with the Native Americans, and the Amer Native Americans talked to them about two blood systems. Well, it, was, it wasn't until 1981 that Dr. Arthur Guyton, the guy that writes, writes physiology books for the medical world, started looking into lymph. Well, he went to the powers that be in the, in the medical community. They wanted nothing to do with it. So he finally had to go to the Department of Defense. And at Walter Reed, they started the study of lymph. And they studied lymph for a season. Then, then the Israelis and the Japanese went way, way past them. But here's what they learned. It's really, really interesting. Our, our bone marrow produces lymph cells and blood cells. And it also, our spinal column, in our spinal column, we produce stem cells. Well, so if lymph and red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow, then how come we have to keep reproducing them? We must lose some of them. They must get lost. Well, so here's, here's kind of how it works. We, we, we need oxygen. Every cell in our body needs oxygen. In fact, I mean, just as an example, cancer is anaerobic. Cancer lives without oxygen. If oxygen gets to cancer at the cellular level, cancer dies. Well, so our, 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 red, blood, our red blood cells pick up oxygen in our lungs. And then we're, how, how do they get to the rest of the body? Well, the red blood cells leak. They leak into the lymph system through the capillaries. And it's the, it's the lymph system that carries oxygen and nutrition to the cells. And it picks up the waste from the cells. Now, how do we, how do we get rid of the waste? Well, we have a thoracic duct. It's a duct that runs up in front of our, our spine, runs into the veins in our clavicles, mostly in the left side, a little bit in the right side, goes back into the heart and gets, gets processed. So the red blood leaks out of the capillaries into the lymph system, and in the, and the lymph does a lot of the work. And then the, 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 the lymph carries that waste back into the red blood system, and it's processed. Now, what happens to all those dead blood cells? Well, every time we excrete, our fecal matter is brown. Why is it brown? Because most of it has to do with red blood, with red blood cells that are dead. What happens to a red blood cell that dies? You ever get a scab on your shoulder or your arm? When you get a scab, what color does it turn? It turns brown. Well, our fecal matter is brown because we, we, we lose so many blood cells every day. We're producing blood cells and losing blood cells. We're not just producing red blood cells. We're producing red blood cells and lymph cells. Now, lymph is really, really important for strength because if you think about muscle fibers, and I've got a few straws here in my hand to explain this. So you've got these fibers, and these fibers, they, they have one column of lymph fluid running between the fibers to lubricate them. So what happens when we have, what happens when, our, when our, 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 our lymph cells get clustered like this? They won't fit through that column. If they won't fit through the column, what happens? That column dries up. And then those fibers stick together. And when they stick together, guess what happens? Well, they dry up, they stick together, and then they get hard. Now, do you ever have a situation where your muscles getting, are getting harder and harder? It's because they're not being lubricated. Well, how do they get lubricated? Well, the lymph has to move between them. Well, if the lymph doesn't have a pump like the heart, how do, how do we get movement? How do we get the movement? Well... Many years ago, I, I got hooked up with a company called NEDAK, N-E-E-D-A-K, and they made a mini trampoline, and then they made a bar that you could hold onto to stabilize yourself when you're on the trampoline. 
and I started getting people with MS on the trampoline and I would get them to do a bounce where their feet never left the mat. It was very, very slight, very slight bounce. They'd do it for 10 or 15 minutes. Well, what happened was they were getting out of their wheelchairs and walking again. Well, I thought that was really interesting, but that the, the Israelis and the Japanese were light years ahead of us. And I learned a lot from it, the Israelis. Well, how do we move limp? We have to move. We have to do movement. And when we do the movement, the limp moves. Well, that little teeny bounce on that trampoline, just move the limp every so far. Don't need very much movement. You're not moving to here. You're just moving a little teeny bit just to flush, flush the veins out, flush the, the, the muscles out, and to get flexibility. Well, of course, I was involved in the massage business, and massage only does two things. It increases circulation of flexibility. And how does it do that? Because when you unravel the muscle fibers, then all of a sudden the lymph will pass through. But the lymph won't pass through if it's clustered and clumped. Now, if you watched my previous video, I addressed some of that. I addressed the, the, the clustering and the clumping. But today I want, to, I want you to understand your, your body and your lymph and your blood system. They need water. Lymph and blood are 90% water. Saliva is 99% water. So if you don't have enough water in your system, your system's not going to work properly. So again, you need a half ounce of water per pound of body weight. And then you need to be doing movement. And the more movement you do, the more flexible you're going to become. If you sit around and sit around and don't move, guess what? You're not getting any, any, any lubrication in your muscles. So I hope, that's, I hope this is a basic, a basis that giving you an understanding of your circulation and you'll start drinking enough water. Now, you remember back when Yeshua Jesus was on the cross and the spear was stuck in his side after he died? That was limp and blood that poured out of him. But now we know that. They didn't know that back then because it was clear. It looked like water, but it wasn't water. It was lymph. So today you know that. So now you can drink enough water, you can take care of yourself, you can take care of the temple that the Holy Spirit lives in, which is you, and you're responsible for that, and you're the only one responsible for that. So now, do a little research. Look back a little bit. When you have a chance, go back to my previous video. If you want to want more information, more knowledge on this, I have a telephone and I answer it. People call me all the time. I have my email address and my phone number under the previous video and I'll put it underneath this video because I want you to be healthy and I want you to understand how your body works so that you can do something about staying healthy. So God bless you. Thank you.